Hello goat lovers, Crystal, Emily, and Darren here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats, and we have been training the does to our big giant new milk stand for a couple of days now. And at first it was a little bit of a rough start, but they're getting the hang of it. Uh, there's still a little bit ways to go on training them on it, but we're doing good, we're making progress, so let's see how good they can do today. Emily is going to show you, we got to start closing some gates here, make sure goats just don't run around. So this is the first gate. Emily is going to hook. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Now Emily needs to close this gate. When they're all done eating the first group and they come back out, they are just able to go that way. Back into the pen. Okay. Now we're closing this gate so they can't just run away into the yard. Oh, this is like the most fun thing in the entire history of this the is a transformer gate yeah so. it's actually pretty amazing so first it's just one gate that gets latched like that and then when we're ready for these does to come out we're gonna let 12 out um, we'll open that gate like that and 12 out and then we'll close the gate so no other does can can come out so we're about to start this madness Emily is going to open up this gate and she's going to let 12 up and then Darren's going to be on the other side and latching goats in um, as they come up. And again, they're not all going to go to the very end yet because they're just, they're just getting familiar with it. They're getting a lot better with it. Um, but so I'm going to be helping Darren trying to get them latched in. Wish us luck. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do this. to just start wiping their teats all the way down and then we'll start milking them. So now I'm going to start milking out all of these does um, two at a time. So my milk machine here does uh, milk out two goats at one time um, and, it, and it works really well. It's been more efficient and definitely faster with them all up here. Um, so I'm just going to work my way on down the line with these ladies here.
Here we go. All right, so I do have another milk machine, as you guys are aware of. Um, and I don't think, I'm, I'm not going to use it because with two at a time, I can focus on just the two and make sure that these suction cups, they're not getting milked out when there's no more milk left in the udder. Um, because that can just strip out their their orifice, their T orifice, and make it enlarged, and that's not a good thing. So, this gives me the capability to just focus on the two that I have. And make sure nobody's getting their orifices over enlarged. So they're done. Good girl. Thank you for your milk. And now, I'm gonna pull this on back and latch to two more does. How's it going this morning, Lily? I'm proud of you for getting on the stand like a good girl. Here, let it. So these girls, trying to get them trained, um, we realized we were giving them way too much food. They just weren't wanting to come up here um, as eagerly as you've seen them this morning. But they're doing a lot better. We have backed up their food a little bit the last couple of days, which in turn has has dropped their, their milk production. So of course that's not good uh, as far as milk test is concerned. Uh, you don't really want them dropping in milk by any means, but without doing it that way, they would not have been eager enough to get on this stand and then get the grain that they're getting in their, in their little feeding trough. So it's working as far as that's concerned. As far as milk supply, naturally, it's dropping a bit. Okay, now as I'm working my way down the line here, Emily is going through um, right after I milk them, and she's just making sure she's get she's stripping them, making sure to get every last bit of milk out of these goodies. We don't have to lean over or anything. Now, Abilene has been kind of a pain in the butt. She's getting a little bit better, but if you guys remember when we first brought out the milk machine for her, she was not having it. She was just kicking, kicking, kicking. Hold on, let me, let me get these off of me. Um, and she kind of just started all over again with it because she's on a new stand. So. being a little bit of a stinker so she wants to kick but if I can get a hold of her udder oh all right girl she's been better than this but okay I got your udder you're okay you're okay see if she lets me do that then she'll let me milk her and I just have to remind her She's not going to get hurt. Good girl. It's the same. You're already used to it, baby. It's the same, but it's not the same. It's, it's the same a different time. stand, but it's still... See? As long as I can get my hand cupping that udder through all of the kicks, she lets me do it. Work in progress, guys. Hold on, Lodi. All right, you're done, Abilene. Good job, baby. Good job. Good job. So, I mean, 
mean, all in all, that goes pretty good. Now, Eveline does the same thing when Emily tries to strip her out. You just gotta grab her udder. Easy, easy, easy. Whatever reason, grabbing her udder works. Good girl, Eveline. You're doing good. Good job. Oh, Eveline. So anyway, you guys, this, I'm loving it. It's still a work in pro process, a work in progress, um, like I said, but all in all, it's only been a few days and they're, they're really starting to get the hang of it and they're doing a lot better than, say, the first time we tried this. That was hard to even get any of their heads into <laughs> their little holding pen there. So. And we got them up there. Yeah. All right. So now we're just going to wheel this beast back up to its first position. Once they're all done and they're all stripped out, um, we're gonna go on the other side and unlatch all of them and then they're gonna come down this chute. Now something we have been doing, uh, we have a squirt bottle out here. It's actually working really well. So once we unlatch them really quick, we kind of just jump in and the stragglers, the ones that don't really wanna come off real quickly, they just get a little squirt with some water and it gets them moving back into the pen. So, are we ready? Yep. All right, we are ready, let's do it. Okay, so now we're gonna open this gate up because all the does in here um, that got let into this part of the pen cannot get back down into the holding pen. So the point of that is, is if we let them off, the second group, if we let them off and put them back into here, um, the other does would try to come out and it would just kind of be chaos, so it wouldn't work. So we're gonna open this one up. This gate doesn't get moved yet um, until they start coming down. But now we're gonna try to get the rest of the goaties up here on the stand. And these are kind of the brats of the whole crew. These are the ones that are given as the most guff. That's why they're not the first ones to go up. Uh, so hopefully they'll do better than last night. They've been progressively getting better, little by little. But uh, here we go. Let's see how it goes, guys.
right, while I'm wiping and stripping down these doughs, they did pretty good, actually. Now I'm gonna say that, they did really good. I'm proud of them. Um, of course, they need a little coercing into each slot, uh, but that went really well. So anyway, I'm just gonna start wiping them down and stripping them out, and Emily will show you um, how the transformer gate is gonna work. And just one more thing, this is honey. It's yes, honey. It's this honey. is honey. <laughs> I'm trying to tell honey and pepper by their butts because they're like identical twins and it's not easy. But either way, we have some juniors up here. We have some that have not had an udder. And so I am still wiping theirs. That way they are used to and really familiar with me touching their udder by the time they freshen. So mm. that's all I wanted to say. All right, so first we unhitch this gate. And now this is the last group of goats. So this gets hooked on to that screw. And then this is where this comes in handy. So this little, little gate goes all the way over here where when the goats run in they uh, when the goats run in they just run straight into the holding pen so this gets unhooked and then it slides over here to where they can access our little spot where, we, where they can't access where they can't access our little spot where we milk do the milking so right when we're all done and all the goats are done milking, we unhitch them and they all run down here and they go right into the holding pen. We have to lure them in. And then I close this and then unhook this to where the goats in the holding pen can access their big, big pen. how our system is working so far um, and again it hasn't even been a full week so I'm, I'm, I'm really really proud with the success um, or you know they're, they're, <laughs> they're making some strides here and so are we and you know we're all having to learn this together it's completely different and it's working out so in a couple weeks we should have it down pat hopefully I don't have to coerce them into their their pens and things like that but even if I do, it's still a better system and I'm just really, really happy with it. So let me just give you a little tour and I'll show you around um, what the milk stand actually looks like. All right, so as you guys saw, this is the first ramp that they come in and then they get up on the big stand, obviously, and then get latched in. They get their grub, their yummy, yummy food, and then when they're all done, they come down this ramp. So it looks like a pretty fancy ramp for goats, but goats are crazy. They like to get out of things and escape. So Derek even went so far as to put this a little bit higher because the gate, when it comes over, at least it's the same um, height as the gate. So they don't feel like, ooh, look at that spot. I can jump out. So he really put a lot of thought into this and I absolutely love it. So of course we're under this big old canopy and tarp so we're out of the direct sun and if it rains when it sprinkles we're good to go which I really really love um, and then of course our big stand um, so it has these bars here so for one obviously they just can't jump into the parlor but also they can't can't really kick at you or, or do things like that so that's that's a nice addition and this here is a barn kitty bye kitty she's waiting for milk 
and obviously this is our milk machine so we have a cord and it's plugged into the generator as you guys probably hear but um, it just kind of comes with me as I move and it stays out of the way over on this end so it's not an issue at all and I love it I have an extra milk stand on both ends so if I need to set something on them like a camera because I'm filming or if I need to put a goat up there and trim their hooves or give them selenium or whatever the case may be or if they're being unruly I don't know maybe it's a timeout stand so this is the inside oh and then also we got solar lights up here two pointing in one pointing out for our night milking and then Derek had this all set up so this is our solar um, panel little thing actually there's our solar panel and this is the docking station and anyway so these are our lights that turn on because we have four of them up here so it gets really bright in here um, we don't have an issue seeing or anything like that nor do the goats um, and we actually have these solar panels on the pins here and there as well and then see there's another one so as far as lighting is concerned when we milk in the dark it's not bad at all we have a spot to hang our blower which every single after every single milking we definitely blow this place down um, and it is on a slab here too which helps a lot because it keeps keeps the dirt down uh, allows us to not only roll the machine a lot easier, but allows us to keep it a lot cleaner and keep that dust down. So that is super awesome. And a banana. Cutie. So let's go around the other side. Okay, so on this side, this is actually the side that is the cutest. Whoever's lucky enough to be on this side gets to see all their cute, adorable faces and not all of their booties, but so these are obviously our feeders and we will clean them out. So sometimes they leave a little bit behind. So we clean them out every single, after every single milking, just simply because we don't want the birds coming in here. They'll, they'll perch up on here and they'll just poop, which is rude. What we feed our goats in the milk stand is Neutrina 17% textured uh, feed. And it's just some grains, different types of grains. And we also add black oil sunflower seeds or what they call boss um, and it is just a 50 50 mixture so they love that and that gets them really excited to come up on the stand um, it's also very high in protein it keeps the butter fat up the black oil sunflower seeds are amazing for them for their coats um, for butter fat and all kinds of things like that so we've really really been loving that grain mix for for them up on the stand but so another thing our little neck latchers here um, work really well for us we really really like them so this is just one that we were playing with to figure out what we wanted to do here um, so we decided we didn't need this spot here but we have the handle and you know obviously there's a notch um, but this here this notch here is what makes us able to pull it up and down so all we got to do is pull it up slide it over to that hook and pull her down and they can't get it up but if they want to be really big butt heads, we have a nail by every one and we will just put it there. Because if they're going to jump up and be crazy, I mean, you know, they could potentially get it knocked out. Uh, but none of them are acting crazy, so we, we really haven't had to use that. Um, but the option is there if we need to. So we also have those hang hanging there. And then we just have them all the way down so we got 12 and it's just super cool it's a lovely sight to see all of these cute little faces on this end i tell you what so i i don't know you guys there's the milk stand and there's how it's working right now it's it's just my husband's awesome he built a really really cool thing and the goats are gonna learn to love it more and more um and i'm already in love with it before i even started using it and i knew there was going to be a little bit of a learning curve um for us and for the goats so i'm just really happy with it so there you have it guys Guess what time it is, guys? It is time to make some more soap. 
And today we are going to make the Me Time Bar. Now in this bar, when we were designing it, our goal was tranquility in a bar. So like something that's going to be relaxing, something that's going to be soothing. Um, and I have to tell you guys, we nailed it in this bar. So if you're ever having a bad day, this is definitely your go-to. Now this bar is just gorgeous, but it has um, some purple Brazilian clay in it, it has a little bit of French green clay in it, so those are just obviously detoxifiers and they pull out impurities, and they're just a mild exfoliant. Um, but the scent that we have in here is just amazing. So it's lavender, rosemary, and eucalyptus, and the three of those together not only are super moisturizing for the skin, um, but they also just have this beautiful, wonderful, calming and relaxing scent. So let's get making it. So I got my bucket of oils here. And as always, we're gonna start with our lovely goat's milk. Just pour that on in there. Pretty. And then here is our essential oils. And we'll just go ahead and pour those in right now too. All right. Mix these together. The smell, you guys, it is so lovely. All right, so that is mixed. So I told you guys that we are using purple Brazilian clay, and we're also using French green clay, and just another additive. Now this almost looks black, but it is indigo. So it's crushed up indigo flowers, and it is just a really, really cool natural dye. I just love it, love it. But you only need a tiny, tiny bit of indigo because it goes a long way. So. What I'm gonna do is get the lye, and I'm gonna pour the lye in here, and then we're gonna pour some of this soap mixture into each of that, those containers. All right, pour it over your stick here. So this is to prevent bubbles, but also splashing. You don't want no lye splashing on you. Just like all the soaps, I don't want this to get real super thick, so I'm just gonna blend it until I know it's perfectly blended and there won't be any spots of unblended lye or anything. Okay, let's check her. It is blended, and these three oils too, they kind of make it want to thicken up a little bit quicker than I want it to, so we're gonna move fast because I still have to blend it in the, in the little pitchers. So I'm aiming for, let me see here, about three to four cups each color. I just love that purple. Perfect. If you um, go from the lightest to darkest color, you don't have to change your stick blender. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go to the purple, to the green, to the blue. Just gonna stay the white. 
And this is um, also a drop swirl technique here. So I'm going to drop these in here. These drop swirl bars are always so fun to uh, cut. So this is a, a fun one to make, and it's also a really fun one to cut. Now I am gonna drop some of these in the middle of where I dropped the other colors, just to kind of make it swirly-whirly around together. Yes, I said swirly-whirly. These colors, like when I was telling you guys, looking for like a bar, just, you know, a bar of tranquil, tranquility. And even looking at the swirls in this bar just kind of gives me that, that vibe, that feeling. It's just a good bar. And not to mention I get to smell how much it, I don't know, I'm trying to talk and my words aren't working today, you guys, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, I get to smell it, smell the essential oils the whole time I'm making it, and that's pretty cool too. All right, and we pour it in. The sucker's getting thick on me. Look at that, you guys. So cool. And every bar is different. All right, so I don't necessarily want to mix the colors together so that they end up being one blob of color, but I do need to kind of level this out a bit. Just kind of tamp it a little. Get any potential air pockets on the sides. So this topping here, let me grab it. Um, so we're going to use a spoon and we just kind of go from the inside out like this and then we put these little chopped up um, little cubies of soap on top here and there. Alright, so let's see, I usually turn them this way but you guys won't be able to see it very well so I'm going to do my best here. Back. We're going to do like this and then come back. It is just a little too wet for this just yet, to be honest. Let's see. Fix that. It's just a real kind of choppy top, really. But it looks neat on a cut bar. So, there. All right, so that's kind of the same. That's what it looks like. Um, again, typically I have them a different way, but that's okay because that worked too. I'll just do like this. It's not supposed to look completely even or anything. Just a choppy mess. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now just come in here and very carefully put a couple cubes here and there. Now eyeball it because you want each bar to have a couple. Voila! That is pretty. 
Check it out. All right, guys. I am all done. Let me see here. I think I might just clean up these edges a second. But boom, two more loaves of me time. This is, again, just a wonderful, wonderful bar, you guys. So go head on over to our Etsy shop and get yourself some. Um, but as normal, I'm going to get these in the cooler box, and then I'm going to get to making some more soap. So that is it for today, guys. I will see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.